We all know that t-shirts showcasing print-on-demand designs have become a popular choice for both online shoppers and entrepreneurs alike. Today, we're diving further into the world of t-shirt design using the power of AI, specifically with ReCraft, a free-to-use platform that's revolutionizing how designers create stunning designs for print-on-demand products. In this video, I'll explore the ins and outs of ReCraft, uncovering its incredible features and demonstrating how it can streamline your design process. I'll also be sharing a great time-saving tip that's bound to supercharge your productivity. Yes, that's right. By implementing this tip, you'll be able to whip up eye-catching designs in record time, giving you the freedom to upload more creations to your favorite e-commerce marketplace. So whether you're a seasoned designer looking to up your game or someone just starting out in the world of t-shirt design, get ready to unlock your creativity and take your designs to new heights with ReCraft. So with that said, let's head on over to my computer and get started. Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. As you can see here, we are on the recraft.ai platform. This has become my go-to platform as of late because of the fact that it is so easy to use. It's so versatile and really, there's really not much that you cannot create using this platform. And for the time being, it's still free to use. So if you haven't gotten into utilizing this platform, I would highly encourage you to do so. Create an account, it's free to join in and start creating some amazing images using this platform. Now, when you are on this particular platform, you have one of two selections that you can choose from. Either you can choose a rastered image or a vector image. If you select the vector image, you basically have a certain number of models that you can choose from. I'm not gonna go into it in highly detail because I did cover this in my previous video. If you haven't watched my previous video about ReCraft, I'm gonna leave a thumbnail to that video up on the screen now so that you can go ahead and take a look at it after finishing this one. But for all intents and purposes, we're just going, we're gonna start with the rastered image. Now, when you click on the rastered image, you're given this square here on the canvas size because it's set to the dimensions of 512 pixels by 512 pixels. For those of you who have, are rather new to the industry, you will need to adjust this canvas size to 4,500 pixels width by 5,400 pixels in terms of height. Okay, this is basically the standard norm in terms of dimension size. And when you hit enter, you can see already that the ratio has changed to four is to five. Now, the one great thing about ReCraft that maybe perhaps we don't see with other platforms like Midjourney and Leonardo, you can effectively create as many of these mini canvases on your screen as you can fit on the screen. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I click on this rectangle here and I hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, okay? And then I press and hold on my left mouse button and then move to the right, you can see now that ReCraft has effectively duplicated that canvas. And you can see by the blue lines that we're perfectly aligned with each other. If I click on it again and then press and hold the Alt key, I can drag yet another canvas. So if I click on all three of them by holding the Shift key and then clicking on each of the three canvases, you can see they're all toggled. And then I press and hold the Alt key and start dragging down. I now have a further three canvases that I can work on. So here we have six different canvases that I can get ReCraft doing different instructions, different tasks for me to be able to speed up the process of creating some amazing designs. So I'm going to be speeding up the workflow and that will obviously allow me to upload more designs to my print on demand shop. So we're gonna click on the first one and now we have the, the toolbar over here that has appeared back on the left hand side. And again, you can create as many of them as you like. If you wanna navigate further in the canvas, all you need to do is grab on the hand icon or else hit H on the keyboard and just drag around. Make sure that you're pressing and holding the H key. Okay, and then again, if I wanted to, I can just press and hold the Alt key, click on the last one, and then just duplicate that, and then do so again. And now I actually have eight different canvases that I can work on. And obviously if I wanna see all of them, I can just click above and reduce the size of the canvas and we're going to decrease and as you can see here now we have all eight of these canvases here on the main canvas that I'm going to be able to create and work for. Now you might be asking yourself well why would I want to do this? Well let's put it this way increasing the speed that it takes for you to create the images for your designs obviously is going to allow you to be able to upload more and that's effectively what we want to do and to my knowledge Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below. No other AI image generating platform provides this facility. 
Yes, you know, you've got Leonardo and Midjourney that will give you four for every text prompt that you are typing in. But in this particular case, I could have eight different prompts working simultaneously, creating images for me. So let's create some images. What are we going to create? Well, what I usually like to do is I like to get inspiration from other, you know, print on demand platforms out there, the marketplaces like Redbubble. Yes, I still tend to obviously take a look at Redbubble every now and then, even though there's been such a, a hoo-ha with respect to, you know, the way their policies and what they've done to us as sellers. There's T Public, there's Zazzle, there's Spreadshirt. You can even go on Etsy and merch by Amazon if you want to. I have a page for Redbubble up, so I'm just gonna bring it in. To the screen here and as you can see um, the, the niche that I chose was K9 veteran now you might ask yourself why would I go with something like that where did I come up with this well basically I went on to Google Gemini which used to be Google Bard and I basically asked it to come up with a list of you know 20 different holidays or niches that one would find in the month of March and what I did was I changed the drop down from instead of most relevant I chose best selling and as you can see here with respect to best selling we got honoring all who serve. We've got a canine here with the American flag in the background, a legendary canine unit vet, unit veteran, military dog handler. And what you can do is you can just go through them and see what resonates with you the most and then put your own spin on it. Don't actually copy the design of somebody else. That's unethical, that's not right. There's enough tools out there. There's enough creativity. I have no doubt inside your mind that you can actually come up with something on your own. So let's assume that for a moment we're going to do this pertaining to, you know, the canine. And I like this uh, caption, honoring all who served. So we're just going to drag this out over here. And what I did was I had gone on to ChatGPT and basically um, I said to you, I'm going to need your help generating some image prompts. And basically, in a nutshell, I gave an original prompt where it stated emblem design, hiker with backpack viewing a panoramic mountain range, digital painting, inspirational, pure white background. And I told ChatGPT that I'm going to give you the theme of the design and I would like you to change the part of the prompt that reads hiker with backpack viewing panoramic mountain range with an effective text that will generate an eye-catching image. The rest of the prompt is to remain the same in the new prompt. Do you understand? And obviously ChatGPT said he did. And I obviously did a few of them, which I'm gonna show you how they turned out later on in this particular video. But let's tackle the canine one. So let's just say, okay, canine veteran. And let's see what comes, what ChatGPT comes back to us with. So we're just gonna go down here. Okay, so emblem design, silhouette of a brave canine dog in service, gear saluting, digital painting, inspirational pure white background. Now, I'm not really sure that, you know, in service gear is actually going to give me the image that I want because I do want something as realistic as I possibly can get. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this particular prompt. And now what we're gonna do, let's move the screen out of the way here. We're gonna click on the text area in Recraft. We're gonna paste it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get rid of um, in service gear saluting and let's just see what we're going to get now before we actually click on recraft to generate this button over here I want to draw your attention to this little icon here with these three lines with the dots on them sort of looks like a an equalizer mixer when I click on that um, I'm going to be able to select the level of detail that I want in the particular image now recraft goes from primitive all the way up to extreme. So you have basically six stages here. So what I'm gonna do is for the first six, I'm going to keep the same prompt, but I'm gonna change the level of detail just so that I can get an idea as to, you know, what Recraft is going to provide to me based on each step of the level of detail. So we're gonna click on the first one here. Let's just paste this back in. Uh, actually, we're on the third one. So let's go on the first one. We're gonna paste the prompt again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this piece here. All right, and then I'm gonna select it all and I'm gonna recopy it. So in the first one here, we're set, let's set it down to primitive. Then we're gonna go into the second one. We'll paste the prompt again. And then we'll go to the second one, which is low. And then we'll do the same for the third. And we'll continue. So we're set to medium there, we're okay. We're gonna to go to the next one, paste. And then we're gonna go up to high. And then the next one here, and we're gonna take that up to extreme. So the first five are gonna be of the same prompt with the same model illustration, and but we have a different level of detail set for that. Now, if I go on to the sixth one here, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the prompt again here, and I'm going to change it. Let's change it to um, Kawaii. Let's see what we got over here. And in this particular case, I'm going to leave it set to medium, and we'll do it one more time. We'll change that to Kawaii, and we'll take up the level of detail up to extreme. For the fun of it, we're going to obviously take, we're on the last one, we're going to change from illustration, let's choose glow. So once I have them all set and sorted, all I have to do is just click on each one and start clicking on recraft. And recraft is gonna start working on each and every one of these. And within a short period of time, we, will, we should start seeing the images coming you know, a light on the screen for us. So as you can see here, rather than doing one and then just retyping everything over again, I can create a batch of designs, images that I want Recraft to obviously create for me. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our images that have generated. So as you remember, this was set to primitive and we actually got a pretty good design too as well. So if I click on that, um, at the bottom, we have a second option that we can choose from too as well, which both are really great. The next one here took the, um, the level of detail to low. Um, we got this K, which obviously appeared in the screen down below. And the second one was actually pretty good too as well. Not so sure about, you know, this brightness behind it. It might throw off people and I don't know how it would actually transpose in the actual final print on a t-shirt, but hey, you know, you never know. The next one here, again, we've got two different images here. This one actually is pretty cool. I love the fact that we've got the K in white here, so we could actually even extrapolate it so that the color of the t-shirt that this particular image could be purchased on would actually come through in that color if we wanted to. Here's another great emblem that we could actually choose from. And as you can see here, the level of detail continued to increase. This one was set to extreme. And then this is the one where we were in the Kauai. So we just select the second one here. These actually work really well too as well. Look at this one over here. This one was on Kauai and the, it, the level of detail was set to extreme. So it was really good too as well. We had a second one here, which really is nice too as well. If we just zoom in here and go back to the first one, um, actually really looks good too as well. And then obviously the, the last one was with the glow model. If we choose the second one here, again, there's possibility, but it really didn't take that long to create. And then whichever one that you're happy with, you can either, you know, upscale it over here just by clicking the AI upscale. So let's just click on this one over here and we'll click on AI upscale and we'll just wait for a few moments. And before you know it, this image will be upscaled. It'll be rather large, which we can then download and then take on into our image editing program. In this particular case, we're going to use Canvas. So as you can see here, it's been upscaled here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it, make sure that obviously it's toggled. We'll click on export, select PNG as our resolution. I'm going to take a look at it. It's upscaled by 4X. We'll just click on PNG. It's downloading. Okay, now if there is an image that you generate that maybe perhaps you want to change a certain aspect of it, you can actually do that in Recraft itself too. So let's move this one out of the way for the moment. Okay, so let's assume that we want to get rid of the K over here. Okay, so let's just zoom in over here. I'm going to move the uh, canvas around and what we're going to do is we're going to choose repaint here and what I'm going to do then is with that little pen icon I'm just going to circle around the K then what I want to do is in the prompt itself I want to type in full body of the canine dog and then we'll just click recraft and we'll wait for recraft to regenerate okay and as you can see here after typing the prompt Recraft has actually gotten rid of the K and actually fixed the dog's body and we have a great design that we can use too as well. And obviously we have two selections that we can choose from. This is the first one. The second one obviously looks like this. There's very minor differences predominantly in the first section on the body of the dog. You will remember that that's the original. Okay, so basically you can actually select which of the two that you like and then use it as an image for a design which we can create on Canva. So let's head on over to Canva right now. What we're going to do is we're going to create a design with this one over here, with this image here, and let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so here we are on Canva here, and I already have a canvas up and running set to 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels, and I set the background to black so that I would know exactly how this particular image is going to appear on a black t-shirt. Okay, so let's just drag and drop the image into Canva. So just doing so, here we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for it to obviously upload. As you can see, it's in the process of uploading. Okay, so it is uploaded. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that 
and I'm going to choose edit photo. Again, because of the fact that I'm using the paid version of Canva, I can actually edit the photo and use remove BG after we click on it. Here we go, remove BG, and obviously Canva will get rid of the background. All right, and what we're going to do now is we're going to grab this image and I'm just going to hover it until I get the cross lines in purple. As you can see here, that tells me that I'm perfectly centered on the canvas size. And if I wanted to, I can actually even grab it and increase the size as well to as well, make it a little bit larger. Again, you want to make sure that you're nice and centered. Brilliant. Now what we want to do is we want to include some text. So we're going to click on text here. We'll choose heading. And this is very small, so let's just drag that up to about 400, just so that it's nice and large. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the heading and I'm going to bring it to the top here. Um, for those of you who have been following my channel, know that I am a real big fan of Handelson 6. Um, it has a, that nice grunge appearance to it as well. And if we go back to Redbubble, we're going to see the honoring all who serve. So let's just utilize honoring at the top here. So we're going to type honoring here and what we'll do is we'll increase the size further. Let's bring that up to 500 and I want to give it a bit of a curve. To give it a curve in Canva, you want to click on effects and then down at the bottom here, you're going to click on curve. Obviously, you want to make sure that, you know, the type of curve you select is going to be appealing and it's going to actually match nicely with the design. Clearly, as it stands right now, it's not the best. So what we'll do is we're going to decrease the curvature a little bit to bring up the edges a little bit. And what we can do is we can increase the size a little bit more. Let's take it up to about 600. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up a little bit on top here. And I think that works really well. So now to make sure that we keep the same curvature, albeit in, in an inverted format, I'm going to duplicate this particular word. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna click on this duplicate icon. We're gonna bring down the duplicated version. And what we'll do is we're gonna double click select all, select A, and then we're going to type in all who served. And we're going to click on effects again. And this time we want the opposite of this curve. So if it's at 83 now, we want to change it to minus 83. So I just click at the beginning of the number and I key in the minus symbol. Once I hit enter, you're going to see that obviously the curvature has changed. I'm going to drag it up a little bit more so that obviously it's nice and centered. And then basically, you know, we already have a great design. Now, if I wanted to change the colors of the font to perhaps maybe match a little bit more with the design, I can do that too as well. So what I'll do is I'll click on either of the text. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to click on the text color icon here, and then I'm going to choose this plus symbol over here to add a new color. But if you see here, Canva already gives you a color palette for the image that we've actually uploaded. So if I wanted this yellow, this gold, I could just click it and that text is gonna turn into a gold color. But still, it still is a little bit on the dark side. So what I wanna do is I wanna select my eye picker tool and I wanna actually go into one of the brighter aspects of the, the design or rather of the image. So I'm gonna click on the plus symbol and I'm gonna choose the eye drop picker over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start moving over the well, image and I can either choose one of the brightest yellows. So let's say, for example, the, the middle dot in the circle is obviously what color I'm going to be selecting. So if I click on that, we can see that honoring has changed to that yellow color. Let's say I want more towards the white, but just moving over into the yellows. Let's try again. Let's try this one here. Okay, so as you can see, honoring does have a bit of a yellowish tinge as compared to all who served. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the color of all who serve to the same color as honoring. So to do that, I'm just going to click on that. We'll click on the eye picker. And as you can see here, that yellow is already over here. So if I click on that, then all who serve is going to be changed to that color. And I think what I want to do here is I want to shrink down the size of the font a little bit because of the fact that, you know, this part of the design, the text is rather long. So let's take it down to 500. Okay, and what we'll do is we're going to stretch open the curvature a little bit more. So we'll just take it down to maybe uh, minus 80. Let's go down to about yeah, minus 79 works well too as well. We'll bring that up. So let's just click on it and then bring it up here a little bit. Okay, now if I want to center it on the page, all I have to do is hit control A on the keyboard. I have all of them selected. We're going to select group so that obviously it's going to move around as one whole. And then I can just move it around to make sure that it's nice and centered. As you can see, that is the case over here. And we have the crossbars 
which obviously effectively tells me that we are nicely centered. So in this respect, I've got this design nicely set, nicely laid out, and then I can easily download it with a transparent background. To do that, we're gonna click on share, and then we're gonna click on download, and we're gonna make sure that transparent background is toggled. And then obviously I can download that accordingly with the, with the background removed, and then upload it to any of the print on demand platforms that I upload to. Now I already went ahead and created some other images just to show you what I generated with Recraft. So this was the original prompt with the hiking component in the original image prompt. And as you can see here, we got a really fantastic image. Um, I went on to Pinterest and I found this particular saying. So guys, I know that we've got ChatGPT and Gemini that can really come up with some really great captions. But don't forget about sort of the quote unquote old school way of doing things. Go on to Pinterest and type in, you know, hiking quotes, dog quotes, ice cream quotes, captions, whatever, and see what's up over there too as well. You never know when inspiration might hit you, you know, through the Pinterest website too as well. So hiking is cheaper than therapy. Always take the scenic route. Okay, now the second one, hike more, worry less. So Recraft gave me an emblem that had more of a hexagon shape, which really worked well for this four word caption. If we go further down, this was another one that I did for K9, the power of loyalty. This was an image. The only thing that I had to actually change is that I had a little bit of a, an artifact just underneath K9. And what I did was then obviously I went into the magic erase in Recraft. So we'll just go back over here and you've got repaint or else erase region. And you just basically highlight the area that you want to have changed. And obviously Recraft will get rid of it for you. And then I uploaded this. I sampled this piece of the emblem in order to get the color of the power of loyalty. This aspect was done in Canva. Then there was also the niche pertaining to adoption and puppies, the paw fixed companion. Again, these were all images generated through Recraft. This pertains to the coffee niche. Coffee, closest thing to magic in a cup. And then this one, coffee, keeping me together crack by crack. This came through in Recraft with these sort of cracks over here. Um, it sort of looked like an ancient fresco and I thought, brilliant, this would really work well with this particular caption, keeping me together crack by crack. So as you can see here, there's a lot that you can do with Recraft and with just a little bit of patience and time and given the fact that you can create so many different canvases and work on you know different designs simultaneously with different image prompts. Yes, in this particular example, I kept it to obviously the canine aspect, but there's nothing stopping you from putting a different prompt for each of the canvas components that you put on the main canvas in Recraft and then come back with some amazing images that you can take into an image editing program like Canva, add some captions, upload them to your print on demand platform, your, your online e-commerce shop, and obviously, you know, get yourself into a great position of lending more sales for your print on demand business. So I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button and turn on the bell notification icon. Help me to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of this calendar year. I know that with your help, I can do that. But for now, I want to invite you to click on this thumbnail that has just appeared on your screen and watch that video bent on helping you take your print on demand business to the next level. Thanks for watching. I'll see you there.